Okay, this is the third and final part of my video series where I'm showing you my method of servicing uh, an AS1900 mechanical watch movement. And so I've just lubricated this friction wheel. And so I'm ready to uh, place the wheel back in position and then we can fit the train wheel bridge. Now, before replacing the center wheel, uh, we need to place a dot of 9010 oil on the center wheel pivot. On this particular model, you'll notice on the train wheel bridge that uh, the jewel holes are capped and I prefer to use uh, an automatic oiler to oil these prior to assembly. On this particular movement, you also have to replace the setting lever screw prior to fitting the, the train wheel bridge. And so I'm oiling with a bit of D5. Replacing the setting lever screw. And now the train wheel bridge can be replaced. And to locate the wheels, you need to use a, a very fine pair of tweezers or an old oiler. And also use another pair of tweezers, um, preferably brass or a, some pegwood to hold the plate down. Don't exert too much pressure on the plate but uh, just enough so that you can tweak the wheels into their respective jewel holes. And when re putting the screws back in, uh, constantly check that the wheels are spinning freely and always keep pressure on the plate with your pegwood or brass tweezers as you can see I'm doing right here. I've just replaced a screw and I'm continuing to make sure that the wheels are spinning freely. If the wheels tend to lock up as soon as you start screwing down, um, back off the screw immediately and adjust the wheels and then try again but remember to keep pressure on the plate as you're screwing down. Initially, do not screw the screws very tight. Make sure, just keep checking the wheels are, const you know, are free and not sticking. So now in with the barrel, again making sure that all the wheels are turning freely. And of course, now we can replace the barrel bridge. The next job is to oil the uh, bearing and this is the barrel arbor bearing and we're going to use D5 oil. Uh, 
And now to reassemble the click assembly. I'm using D5 here. And now, of course, the the ratchet wheel can be replaced. Be careful not to over tighten the ratchet wheel screw, uh, these tend to break quite easily. So now we're continuing by refitting the crown wheel. Uh, this is the crown wheel shim. And we're going to oil it with D5. and on with the crown wheel. Also remember the crown wheel screw is usually uh, a left-handed thread so it would screw on in the reverse of what you would think it would normally screw on. And again don't over tighten because they're very easily broken. So now with the crown wheel in place we're ready to flip the watch over and we can work on refitting the keyless mechanism or the winding work. So here we have the winding pinion and the clutch wheel and we're going to lubricate the ratchet teeth uh, with a little bit of grease. Just like so. Not too much. So on the winding pinion we've put uh, two little dots of grease, one opposite each other. And on the clutch wheel we've used, uh, we'll, we'll have one little dot of grease. And you noticed I put too much initially, so I've cleaned it off so that I can put the right amount. On reassembly of the keyless work, I like to start with the um, with the clutch wheel, making sure the teeth engage with the crown wheel uh, correctly. Uh, followed by the, uh, the the winding pinion, and now. Uh, I want to refit the winder or the winding stem and I'm lubricating this with the same grease. Um, very small amounts, uh, just like so. Now to place that 
uh, through the movement, the winding pinion and the clutch wheel. Now for a, a fairly fiddly job of uh, refitting the setting lever and for this it's helpful to have finger cots um, because I like to hold it down with my finger whilst I screw uh, the setting lever screw which obviously is uh, on the opposite side of the movement. don't over tighten this initially uh, make sure the um, setting lever is engaged with the winding stem I'm sorry it's a bit blurred but that's what I'm doing there and then once it's engaged correctly then you can screw it all the way home now annoyingly my camera stopped recording uh, whilst I was uh, replacing the uh, yoke um, yoke spring and setting wheel. When you replace them, uh, just replace them in the reverse that you took them off. And so use a, a tiny bit of D5 oil uh, here and here. And you'll need to grease here, here and here. Now on to the motion work and before reassembling the motion work you want to oil with D5 uh, here and here and make sure you oil both the bearing on the centre wheel and the arbor of the centre wheel. And with the motion work back in place, uh, just giving it a test to make sure everything is running as I would expect. What we're looking for is uh, we're making sure that the wheels aren't uh, uh, getting blocked in any way. Now with the movement flipped back over again, um, refitting the pallets. Extreme care has to be taken when refitting the pallets because A, the pallet stones can um, quite easily get damaged and B, the pallet pivots uh, can also get uh, damaged. So it's a case of being very patient and just working it in. And once you know the pallets are in place and the pivots are correctly in their holes, I like to put half a wind on it and uh, quickly just check the operation before screwing down. This way I know that the pallets are in place correctly.
Now the escape wheel teeth do require lubrication and for this uh, the easiest way to apply lubrication to the escape wheel teeth is to actually uh, apply uh, a tiny amount of oil on the pallet's uh, exit s uh, stone. And so this can be quite tricky uh, because you don't really want to flood the whole stone with oil. You just want a tiniest amount uh, to fill half of the face of the exit stone. Okay, I'm going to try and get a close up for you. So perhaps you can see a small shadow on the bottom of this stone. That's the oil I've just placed there. I consider that to be about half a stone. And uh, that will be enough to lubricate the whole of the uh, escape wheel teeth. And I'm using Mobius 9415 um, to lubricate. And if the watch had a faster train speed, uh, for example 28800 and above, I would use Mobius 941. It should also be noted that the top and bottom pivots of the pallets should not be oiled at all. And so now to refit the balance. I'm now removing the Inca block jewels. Um, two things, I need to uh, really give these a good clean um, because I uh, cleaned this through the machine assembled. And second thing is I need to lubricate it. So the end stone is still attached to the jewel hole and uh, once this goes in the watch cleaner uh, this should separate. So I'm putting the balance in, this will help to clean the pivot and there's the jewel hole and the end stone in the cleaner. I'm going to use a blower. This is like a pump action blower made by Bergen and what this does is it almost it almost creates like an ultrasonic effect um, it basically blows a load of air bubbles around and helps to clean the parts
The cleaning solution I'm using is called Horror Load. Uh, some people use lighter fluid and uh, also there's a, um, a product called One Dip made by Bergen which is also very good. So to dry these parts off I'm just placing them on to a piece of paper to blot away the excess and I'm using another blower to uh, just literally blow air on it and it will dry. It's a good idea to dry these off properly with a um, with a blower um, because uh, they could, I don't know my fear is is that they could get sticky. And now oiling the end stone, uh, I'm using um, at ninety at ninety ten oil. You want uh, a small amount from the centre of the stone uh, to cover approximately a third of the stone and certainly do not cover the whole stone with oil. Now with the top pivot oiled, um, it's time to do the lower inker block jewel. And, um, and this is done in exactly the same way as the top pivot jewel. So now it's time to replace the calendar. And we'll start with the calendar ring. and uh, this part uh, pushes the calendar over every 24 hours now this is the calendar jumper and the calendar wheels should be lubricated uh, with some grease I like to apply the um, grease uh, to the jumper and as the calendar wheel goes round, um, the oil, uh, sorry, the grease will uh, apply itself around the uh, all the teeth on the inside of the calendar wheel. I'm using a piece of pegwood to hold the spring steady whilst I get it into position.
So we're nearly done. The hour wheel goes on. And then the calendar driving wheel. And a screw for this one is shouldered. Which means uh, once it's screwed down it doesn't uh, lock the wheel up. Allows the wheel to spin freely. So now with the calendar assembled, I'm just checking the operation. All good, so now back on with the dial. And I need to turn the uh, hands around, or the motion work around, until the calendar turns over. That's when I know it's at 12 o'clock midnight, so that I can set the hands accordingly. So this concludes my three part uh, video series on how I've serviced this AS1900 movement on a rotary watch. I hope you found it useful. Uh, all that's required of this movement now is to regulate it and test it and recase it obviously. But, um, thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you next time.